Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of HPE's GreenLake announcement. We've been following the cadence of GreenLake's announcements for several quarters now and, and even years. And we're going to look at cloud adoption and frameworks to help facilitate cloud adoption. You know, in 2020, the world was on a forced march to digital, and there was a lot that they didn't know. A big part of that was how to automate, how to reduce your reliance on physically, manually, and, and plugging things in. And so, Customers need an adoption framework to better understand and how to de-risk that journey to the cloud. And with me to talk about that are Alexia Clements, who's the Vice President of Worldwide Go-To-Market for GreenLake Cloud Services at HPE, and Alexei Gerasimov, who's the Vice President of Hybrid Cloud Delivery, Advisory, and Professional Services at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Folks, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks so much Thanks for having you. us. You're very welcome. So Alexei, what, what is a cloud adoption framework? How does that all work? Yeah, thanks Dave. Uh, so the framework is a structured approach to elevate the conversation to help our customers get outcomes. So we've been helping customers uh, adopt the benefits and the most out of their IT for a decade. And uh, we've noticed that they basically focus on eight key areas uh, as they transform to cloud-like capabilities. It's a strategy and governance, it's innovation, people, uh, DevOps applications, operations, security, and data. So we've structured our framework around those core components to help our customers get value. Because end of the day, it's all about changing the way they operate to take advantage of all of it. Yeah, so you can't just pave the cow path and kind of plug your existing processes. There's a lot mm -hmm. that's unknown, as I said up front. So, so uh, Alexia, maybe you could talk a little bit more about some of the real problems that you're solving with customers that you see in the field. Yeah, absolutely. So most customers are going through some form of digital transformation. Mm -hmm. And these transformations are difficult and they need a structured approach to help them through that journey. I kind of like to think of it as a recipe to make a meal. Mm -hmm. So you need to know what ingredients to buy and what are the steps to perform to make that meal. Okay, so when you talk to customers, what do you, what do you tell them that's in it for them? After, the, after you've actually successfully helped them deploy, what are they telling you? Yeah, well they're telling, they now have reached their business outcomes and they're, you know, they're a more agile organization. What's the experience look like when you, when you go through one of these you know, journeys and, and yeah. you, you apply the adoption framework and you sort of paint a picture? For yeah, it? absolutely. So every customer is in some sort of transformation like Alexia said, and transformation implies you got to know where you start and you got to know where you're going. So the experience traditionally is customers need to understand what are my current hybrid cloud capabilities? What do I have? What am I missing? What's lacking? And uh, then determine where do you want to go? And in order to get from point A to point B, they, they have to get a prescriptive approach. So the framework sort of breaks down their path from where they are to their desired maturity, and it takes them in the very prescriptive path to get there. So you start with an assessment, you do a gap analysis. Based on their skill sets, I presume, you identify what's possible, right. help them understand you know, best practice, which they may not achieve, but this right. is kind of their North Star. Right. Right, and then, then do you help, help, how do you help them fill those gaps? Because there's skills gaps, everybody talks about right. that today. You guys pr presumably can provide additional services to, to do right. that, and, but, but so can you add a little bit of color to, to, to that scope? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so to your point, the first is a maturity level. So once you figure out the maturity level, you understand uh, what needs to be done. So if you look at our domain, the, the eight domains that I mentioned in the framework, people is a big one, right? Most of the folks are struggling with people skills and organizational capabilities. And it's all because it's an operating model change, right? And people are the key component to this operating model change. So we help our customers figure out how do we achieve that optimal operating level and operating uh, uh, model maturity. And that could be on-prem, that could be on public cloud, that could be hybrid, that could be at the edge. And yeah, we, if we can, uh, HP, the framework by the way is pretty, pretty open and, and pretty objective. If we can help our customers address uh, and achieve those outcomes, great. If we cannot directly, then we can have a partner that can help them you know, plug in something that we don't have. Yeah. Are you finding that, that in terms of the maturity that pe most people have some kind of experience with, with cloud, but they're struggling to bring that cloud experience mm -hmm. to their on-premise state. They don't want to just shove everything into the cloud. Right. So, so, so what is that kind of typical journey look like for folks? I know yeah. there's, it's a wide spectrum. Right, you got people that are maybe more mature, maybe some of the folks in financial services got more resources, yeah. but, but can you sort of give us a sense as to what the typical, the average yeah, yeah, journey yeah. looks like? Absolutely, by the way, so to give you a customer example, a perfect example of a large uh, North American integrated energy company. 
they decided to go with cloud first, like a lot of companies do with sure. the cloud first. And why? The reason was they want agility. So they started going to the cloud and they realized in order to get agility, you can't just go to, you pick your you know, public CSP, you got to change the way they operate. So they brought us in and they asked, could you help me figure out how we can change the organization so we actually operate on the proper level of maturity. So we brought our team in, we helped them figure out what do we need to look at. We need to look at operations, we need to look at people, we need to look at applications, and we need to figure out what gives you the best value. So when all said and done, they realized that their initial desire of uh, you know, public first or cloud first wasn't really public cloud first. It's a way to operate. So now the customer is in three different public CSPs, they're on-prem, they're at the edge, they're everywhere. So that's a focus, yeah. Is the scope predominantly the technical organization? How deep does it go into the, to the business? Is it obviously the application development team is involved, but how deep into the business does this go, the framework? Right, and, and it's absolutely not a technology focus. The whole c concept here is it, it's outcomes based and it's a results based. So if you look at the framework, there's really not a single element of the framework that says tech, like storage or compute. No, it's, it's people, it's data, it's business value, it's strategy and governance. Because the goal for us is being objective is we're just trying to help them address their outcomes, not necessarily to give them more tech. So Alexia, I like that answer because it's a wider scope. As I mean, tech, but if we just focused on the tech and that's the swim lane, it'd be a lot easier. But as we all know, it's the people in the process that are really the hard part. So that, that makes the challenge for customers greater you're hurting more cats, so what are some of the obstacles that potentially you help customers uh, uh, before they dive in understand? Right. Yeah, so we're giving them a roadmap on mm -hmm. where they need to go. So we're, like, like I mentioned, that recipe. So we're really trying to um, identify what is their strategy and where do they, what are the outcomes that they're trying to drive and help them on a, you know, with that, a path to meet those outcomes. So some of those, I mean, every customer is a little bit different. Um, I mean, we had one customer which was a, one of the largest hospitals in North America, and they, they needed to, they wanted to go to the cloud, but they realized they couldn't put all of their patient data on the cloud. So what we did was we helped them in changing their operating model and really look to see how does that, how do they need to, what's that end game for them? And actually help redo their operating model to have some in the cloud and some on-prem and, and really identify you know, where they needed to go for their roadmap. So that was an obstacle that they had. Hey, we can't put all this stuff out mm -hmm. there. How does that now need to work in this new world? I would think the data model is a big deal here. I mean, you just mm -hmm. gave an example where there's a, there's a, there's a governance and compliance a aspect to it, so thinking about that, that example, did they have to change the way in which they provided federated governance? Uh, was that, you know, presumably identify whose, whose responsibility that was to adjudicate, but right. also yeah, had to get the, the, the implementers to follow. Right. Um, that's, it, how does that all work? Is it just the deep conversations and then you figure out how to codify it? Or? No, so, what it, so, we ha, so through those eight domains that Alexi mentioned, we go through step by step how they need to think about it. And mm -hmm. with in mind, what are their business outcomes and goals that they're trying to achieve? So really identifying how they need to change that operating model to meet those business outcomes. So what's the output? It's a plan, right? That's tailored to the customer. Is that is that correct? And and then sort of assistance in, in implementing downstream, or what do they get? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And just to uh, piggyback on what Alexia said, the alignment, the early alignment, the strategy and governance, as you mm -hmm. mentioned, is probably the most important thing because everybody says we want to be cloud first. Well, what does right. that mean? Cloud first means different things to everyone. So you said give them a plan. The first will help them figure out is. What does that mean for you? Because end of the day, you're not going to the cloud for the sake of cloud or anywhere. You're going to the cloud to get some sort of value. So what's that alignment? So the plan is supposed to help you on your road to that value, right? So we'll help them figure out what I want to do, why, for what purpose, what's going to actually address my business value. So yes, they will get a plan uh, as part of it, uh, but more importantly, they, they, get, uh, they get a set of activities, communication plans, uh, which by the way, another block that you got to address. Huge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a lot of executives tell me, look, if you don't change your operating model and go to the cloud, you're talking, you know, nickels and dimes. If you want to get telephone numbers, you know, big companies, you want to get Bs with billions, you have to change the operating model. And the, the problem that they tell me is, a lot of times the corner office says, okay, we're doing this. Yeah. 
But everybody in the fat middle says, what are we doing? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now more than ever, I mean, customers need to look at that, oper like a more modern operating model to realize the benefits of cloud capabilities, whether that be at the edge, their data centers, their colos, cloud. So they really need to look at that. And what we've seen is with our framework, we're really helping customers accelerate their business outcomes, de-risk their transformation, and really optimize that cloud operating model. It's that alignment, you're reducing friction within the organization, mm -hmm. confusing, uh, you know, conf confusion. If people don't know which direction they're going, they're yeah. just going to go wherever they're pointed. Right. Right. Well, and then you, back to the alignment. So you got alignment, and you mentioned communication. You have to communicate up and down, left and right, across the organization, because that's one of the most probably ignored elements of any transformation, because you said people don't know. So you got to communicate, and then you have to actually measure and report on how they you know how the transformation is happening, so we can help on all three of those. Especially when everybody's remote, yeah. right? And then yeah. I say, hey, these digital transformations, there's so much that's unknown. Right, it's and difficult. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a lot of new. And so you, yeah. you also have to, I, I presume part of the plan is, hey, you know, it's not going to be 100% perfect, yeah. so you have to have right. some and, latitude And you're constantly in. iterating mm -hmm. on that plan. Mm -hmm. What does this have to do with GreenLake? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, GreenLake is HPE's, you know, cloud everywhere. And what we're really doing is this framework is helping customers with that path to get that cloud-like experience and as a service model. And so the framework is really helping clients understand where do they need to go and what GreenLake solutions can help them get there. So the fundamental assumption of, of not every cloud player necessarily, but I would say most hyperscalers is, hey, ultimately all of the data and the workloads are going to go to the cloud. That's yes. their, their operating premise. So they all have a, an operating you know, framework to facilitate that. Right. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's hung in cheek, but it's true. So, but everybody has one of these. Right. Um, how is yours different? Yeah, so like, like you said, there's lots of different you know, frameworks out there, mm -hmm. but what we're really focused on is meeting those business goals and outcomes for clients. So we didn't focus on the technology like we mentioned. What we were really focusing around, I mean, we kind of learned early on that every customer has um, technical capabilities, applications, data in multiple clouds on-prem, mm -hmm in colos and at the edge. So we didn't focus on like the, on just the technology. So it's really driving business outcomes and their goals. And, and the tech, all those frameworks that we just mentioned, they're really specifically driving a particular technology tool or vendor, implementing a particular technology or vendor. So we, we talk about outcomes a lot, but I wonder if we could peel the onion yeah. on that. So, you know, the highest level outcome is I want to increase revenue, yeah. <laughs> cut cost, drop to the bottom line, increase shareholder value, improve employee experiences and retention, make customers happier, grow my business. I mean, those are, I mean, I, I don't know a lot of businesses that don't right. want to do that. So okay, that's cool, but then I'm imagining you really start to peel the layers and say, okay, this is how we're going to get there. And, and you get down to specific objectives as to the how. Is that right. sort of how this works? Right. And that's to, um, to echo what Alexia said, that's exactly why ours is different. We're not focusing on how to adopt Microsoft or AWS or Alibaba. We're focusing on how we can deliver the customer experience or better revenue you know, or you know, increased value for the consumer, for, for whatever the company we're helping. So the framework will look at that and figure out how do we actually address it, whether it's on public cloud, whether it's on-prem, well, it's at the edge. You mentioned, Alexi, that some, hey, if we don't have the skills, we yeah. get a partner who yeah. does, a big company, you got a huge partner yeah. network. So, for example, if you might not have necessarily a deep industry mm -hmm. expertise, that's where you might lean on a partner, is that is that a good example or is there a better one? Yes, and uh, we know we're not going to, just like you mentioned, uh, AWS or Microsoft or Alibaba think that everything will go to public cloud. I don't believe so. But at the same time, we know not everything will stay on-prem. So the combination of on-prem, the edge, you know, private cloud, and public cloud is what the customers are after. So our partners could be either third-party you know, uh, system integrator that can help us implement something, or even the public CSPs, because we know our customers have capabilities everywhere. So the question becomes, how can we holistically address their needs, whether it's on-prem, whether it's in public cloud? Great. Guys, thanks so much. Thank really you, thanks for having us. And, thanks for uh, having it. My, my pleasure, and thank you for watching, everybody. This is theCUBE's continuous coverage of HPE's GreenLake announcement. Keep it right there for more great content.